because oh. and, and, and there's a reason for this. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. So Cheryl Kaiser and I are both business coaches for creative individuals. And we have been talking about a couple of people that we are both working with. And I have a new coaching client myself. So the conversation is relevant. So I thought I would record it and we could potentially share it. Um, we're talking about how to clarify our message in our brand. And we're talking about fear and what stops us from moving forward in our businesses. And um, the current conversation that made me prompt the recording was um, <clears throat> related to the clarity part. Um, so in giving it back to Cheryl in a moment, <clears throat> the clarity of your brand for a photographer or a graphic designer or another creative, if you aren't clear on the target market, which is also known as your niche market, then you'll waffle in taking jobs, right? And taking new clients. So Even the conversation was, tell me about your person again. She's a photographer and she's well known, but she has a studio that's directly across the street from a wedding. Yeah, from a bridal show. She's, she's, she's been in business a couple of years, still building her brand, um, but trying to figure out, you know, how to not have the work that seems to come to her and I've been in the same situation and where, I have too yeah you're at a certain point in your career it's like well I just need the money you know and what? but then that starts confusing things especially if you're just starting out because it's like oh well yeah I saw you doing a wedding um you know and you'll get five more weddings because you're at one wedding and right. so she's she's given up weddings um well, it's really interesting that I put this out there to any photographer that I talk to is as soon as you say, I'm a photographer. Oh, yeah. 99.9% .9 of the time, the next conversation is going to be, oh, do you do weddings? Yeah. Oh, you must be busy this time of year with all the weddings. Like, I'm yeah, like, no. Uh, no. <laughs> no near them with a 10 foot pole. Thank you. My marketing is very clear. And it, it is, I do everything but weddings. And, and, and actually, people were like, oh, but then I, and I take, and I always pause and then I add, well, that's not true. Let me, let me rephrase that. I will do a wedding, but you really have to pay me what I'm worth. Yeah, and that yeah. shuts people right up. The, the so. weddings that I have, yeah, it, yeah, the, the weddings that I have done have been for very close clients yeah. where I'm another member of the bridal I'm, party. I'm very select, but I am not a wedding <laughs> photographer. And yeah. I actually learned a very valuable lesson when I was in California because I did a 50th wedding anniversary party. And while the, it wasn't a wedding, there was a problem at the end with the client's results. And I recognized from her perspective who she was not my client. It was her husband who hired me. So I'm talking to the guy. Right. And I learned a very valuable lesson that I should be making sure that I talk to the woman because I could tell based on her complaint that she expected the same thing she had 50 years ago at her wedding reception. Uh, and that was not in my mind because I'm not a wedding photographer in my mind, right? So the perspective here was very valuable in learning what I learned. Now, going forth with what we were just talking about in pricing and brand clarification, when you want to be, oh, say, say tweens, Okay, we just, I'm a tween photographer. When I had my studio, I fought for three years against the norm that I had to be a niche. I didn't have to be a niche. I don't want to be a niche. You know me, I'm like, I'm a creative. I want to do all the creative things I have. I had an art gallery and I had all this stuff, but I didn't want to do what everyone was saying that you do. I didn't want to be a box store photographer. And, but at the same time, when you have a studio, you have to pay the bill of the studio. So you have to figure out what that one product that you want to be known for that people are going to share their wonderful experience for that one scenario. And you have to present that as your main focus. So it a tween, a tween session yeah. makes sense across from a bridal session because brides equal family and children grow into tweens. Right. So eventually, if you're there long enough, <laughs> 
Well, and the, the gap it's still though, referral would be, ability, you know, it, it is the, the gap, though, would be, you know, from a bride to um, tween, you've got the baby thing. And if you know, look, you you have brides babies. who have who are step families who have kids that would oh, come in, I'm, I'm just saying. Those, yeah, but generally, like, it seems like if you're doing brides, people, especially a lot of the programs out there, expect you're going to do babies as well. So you're going to be ready for the maternity, ready. So unless now the weddings that I've done, which were few, were all um, people who are second marriages, which, yes, you have older kids or, you know, stepchildren. Um, and uh, so those weddings to me were enjoyable because there was, there was not the pomp and circumstance of bouquet throwing and all of that. They weren't like young couples are looking for, you know, a, their weddings. I don't know. I guess there's more of the pomp and circumstance and the parents are trying to impress friends in some cases. Um, <clears throat> and I'm finding second marriages are more about the love, the togetherness, the family, and everyone just having a good time, you know? Right. And so that's where I've enjoyed, you know, when I did weddings doing that. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so, um, so going a, from a like tweens would be a natural progression to seniors well, and that's yeah, she enjoys it, seniors and maternity, newborns, children, tweens, high school seniors, yeah. families, and see, right? That's there's the, no, well, yeah. And there's no, but she just wants to do tweens, seniors and women's portraits, like empowering kind of photography, no brides, um, no babies, not photographer and like me like I did tons of tons of I look at my client list over the years and there was a span of about eight years I'm exhausted just looking at my my folder of clients you know I had anywhere from 30 20 to 30 babies in my one year baby plan like in the pipeline I had my toddlers I had Mother's Day I had Christmas I had Santa I you know and then the high volume jobs, I was running with public relations work and I enjoyed each part of it. And my studio got known for providing portraiture, you know, family portraiture at any stage and um, uh, uh, public relations and marketing photography and uh, uh, some of these volume jobs. Now, as my business has grown, um, <clears throat> I am not physically interested, like getting on my knees, photographing. I just, it's difficult to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. My feet for four hours for an event. So I shifted my photography business. So I'm primarily marketing and public relations and family portraiture. Um, okay. So your niche is family. <laughs> right. So I've niched right. down um, a little bit and it, it takes time and ch takes changing the wording and the marketing and the samples you show to get that message across. Now, what I, what I talk to new entrepreneurs about. That's what I was um, going to ask. My, yeah, how, do you, I, how do you decipher? Right, exactly. So that was the whole point of recording this is because I wanted to make sure that we both address how do you take a new photographer and guide them to today's ability? They, what, what I suggest and work with them on is, and it's a process of them as a photographer as a person okay their values their beliefs what what is their when are they on you know what most drives them and you know so what excites them and begin to concentrate and look at the kind of work they enjoy doing and start building a business around that to start with and then as because what i when i talk to a new group of, of entrepreneurs one of my pearls of wisdom <clears throat> is everybody, everybody will tell you what is good for your business. Right. Oh, Crystal, you know what? You should be doing weddings. You would do great with weddings. People don't stop to think. And usually their motivation is they want you to do something for them. And because they don't know how. Uh, and you know, my response to them is I would say, well, do something. you tell a potter? to go chisel out a marble sculpture and tell right. them you would be great at it. 
so it's no different and it could be it, it could be another business like in the case with this photographer the bridal shop across the street you should do weddings because we would do so well It'd be one stop shopping well that's all well and good for for the bridal shop but if you don't enjoy weddings nobody's going to benefit no bride is going to benefit if you're not enjoying being there for her day uh, it could Especially be if you don't know how <laughs> well but i mean even if you do know how i mean i know how and i just don't enjoy them you know yeah. it's very stressful for me um but even salespeople, and and i've experienced this so many times someone who's trying to sell you a service or an ad this will be perfect for your business crystal this ad will this billboard will be seen by thirty thousand drivers a day yeah, well, yeah. I can't photograph 30,000 people in a day. Oh, my client. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't photograph 30,000 people. Come on. <laughs> and even if a thousand of them were the ones that would need photography, they're not all your client. Right. Some of them may be a client for JCPenney. You know, and then others may already have a family photographer they don't want to give up. And then there's the ones in the middle that they're not sure they want to pay you what you're worth, you know? So, so I look at it as it's the first thing I teach my photography clients is you have to look at yourself as an artist, right? You have to put yourself in the shoes of a fine artist. And, and then they look at me and go, what do you mean? Well, think painter. I am a painter. Okay. So now, or in today's world, I'm a sculptor or I'm a pottery maker, right? I'm a glass blower. That's a very specific Mm -hmm. fine art craft and photography is a craft the tools we use are our tools and we learn to use the tools and we learn to sculpt with light right that's what we do and when you can't think about yourself that way now you're just a commodity now you're in competition with the big box stores and that's and when that's you, where the learning, difference is that's when you're a minion and your work looks like the work of the person who like, Ooh, right. that's pretty. I like want to just cubicle like, next to you. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and you know, some of the things too, that when I work with creative, now I work with women who are creative about running their business. So they may have a retail store or something like that, but a lot of this still applies. And uh, <clears throat> it's like, you know, we all as photographers or designers or whatever, we see YouTube videos, we take, uh, you know, online courses and stuff like that. Or, or live courses, and this is something that I saw, I was like, oh, wow, I love their work. Oh, I wish my work would look like that. And it's like, okay, they're using that light and that light and that modifier and that setting. And I can't even tell you how much money I have spent over the years buying their equipment. And the lesson is we, we all have the same camera, you know, but we all have a different vision their vision using that equipment is completely different from my vision because I have a fine art background, you know, and an art history background. They don't, they have a different kind of background. So it's like, you may, you, it's important to know what you love about the work you're seeing and the person you're studying with, like know what you love about. Maybe it's how they sculpt light. So then learn to sculpt with light, you know, try, but, test different things but you still as an artist then you have to bring your your art ability. your experience and your abilities and your talents and everything into the mixture and that's i think what's becoming really important for me to help with my customers is to not look like a commodity you know to not do what everybody else is doing take the best parts and pieces of it and then bring it in and figure out how it applies to your business, your business goals, your lifestyle goals, and everything else, and then create your business from there, working with the people that you want to work with. Right. And I translate that into, um, there are two parts to being creative. There's the heart piece, and that's where your creative passion comes from. So the creativity side of it comes from your heart. So when you're excited about what you're doing, then you're in your passion. However, the other part of that is, like you just said, it's the business aspect. So you have to separate the two. You've got to be able to mentally separate the two at any given moment. If I'm a photographer and I'm in the studio, I'm in my heart space. I'm in my creative space. I need to be fully engaged in that. 
during that session. And then after that session is when I can move into the business space. And then I have to think clearly from my head. And the only way you can think clearly from your head is if you've defined your system. If you know what your minimum requirement is to run a studio. If you do what the PPA, Professional Photographers of America, tells you to do, which is how to price yourself accordingly, right? So getting your time value, getting your minimal costs that have to be paid value and applying that all into what is the minimum of an order that I need in order for someone to be in my studio space, you know? So heart is separate. Harp, harp is where you create your passion from. We, we, we wear two different hats and, and I'm amazed and I've written, you know, several blog posts about profitability and so forth because I, I'm a combination of coach and consultant because yes, I can help someone learn lighting and photography and how to work a camera and that kind of thing how to be profitable in business. And then I can also help them understand why they're not profitable in business, like what's going on back here. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of fun for me to kind of flip back and forth. And it's amazing to me how women, and I'm sure men too, who are creative about running their business, whether they're in an actual create, what would be considered a creative business like photography or graphics or something, or they're running a floral shop, which is still just as creative, um, they have no idea, no idea what it costs just to turn the lights on. Mm. And like, do you pay yourself? Well, I take money out of the business when I need it. I said, that doesn't answer the, that's a no, I'm guessing. Like, you know, how much does it cost to turn your lights on? Well, I don't know. Like I just pay my bills month to month. And, and those are the same people that are, scratching trying to earn a living and are living month to month to month because they have you know no idea um what their numbers are and that you have to start right the analytics aspect that's a business yeah. head thing and so yeah. people don't we, we all just think that we're we can go every day and just keep going forward but yet if we don't analyze and we don't look yeah. at the results we don't have a clue what roi is yeah. People don't know what it means. Hey, listen, it's um, it's been about 17 minutes um, in this conversation. And I think it's been fantastic. This has been um, great. Why don't you wrap it up and tell people where to go so they can continue this conversation. Let's do that. And then we'll end this recording. Yeah. If uh, the um, Moxie sister circle dot com uh, will take you to a, a page where you can create a little account. I've got a ton of resources on the website that are only available to women in the sister circle. It's part of the Moxie sisterhood. And, um, and then that will also bring you over into the Facebook group, which is closed where we do a lot of these conversations, um, coaching corner and so forth. Um, and, uh, you can find me on Facebook as the Moxie coach Facebook dot com slash moxie coach so um, what's your website um it's the moxie sisterhood dot com okay. and within that the moxie sister circle awesome it's i think the- these great conversations i love having these conversations with you and um like yeah. i said we just took the opportunity to do an impromptu skype recording um my um on my end it got jumpy i don't know if it's on your end if it's just mine but i'm hoping the end of this recording is doing all right but yeah, um, I'm fun. goodbrain.com. I'm Crystal Nato. That's Cheryl Kaiser, Cheryl T. Kaiser. And um, we look forward to seeing you guys online in the Moxie Sisterhood. I'm glad everybody was here. Thanks, Crystal. You're welcome. Ciao for now. All right. Cheers. <laughs>